Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with part two of our 2020-2021 Panini Mosaic Basketball Fast Break Dual Case Break. We did the first 20 in a different video and we'll put the link to that part one in the description of the video below. This is part two. If you watch uh, video one, there was a trade, so you'll, you'll see the list again right here. So Chad and Simon made a deal. I don't think there's anything... Has there been anything significant for either of those teams? Maybe not. Not yet, anyway. Here's the second case. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see this all on this camera. Yet. Sort of an awkward sized case and quite heavy. Four stacks of five. <clears throat> Here's our first stack of five. And the rest of these you can see hiding behind me over there. They're not going anywhere. All right, so each stack is about 25, 30 minutes. couple hours, maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe hour 40. So once again, this is part two. We'll do a recap for part two at the end of this video. There's a recap for part one, the first case in the first video. We've got the Dodgers at Giants. Dodgers leading 4 1, top of the seventh. They're in San Francisco. Two outs, runner on. to a really nice part of the sports calendar, boys and girls. <clears throat> Got NBA playoffs starting tomorrow. I think NHL is down to their last game or two. They'll be going into the playoffs soon. So, we're going to be a couple weeks into the baseball season, a few weeks into the baseball season. So, it'll be exciting. Mookie Betts driving in. James Alman is on base again. There's an Ottawa box, and here is Onyeka Okongwu for Nicole and the ATL. Do we got anyone here? Mic check, sound check, sound check, break check, break check. Do we have anyone in this break watching live? Or did everyone just say, forget it, we're going to go to bed? I don't want to watch this hour-long break with Joe. All right, 18 out of 50, there's Jalen Smith for the Suns. That's going to be for Mario. And all these lamellos will go to Steve Birch and the Hornets. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see some more Lamellos, hit some nice lamellos in the first half. All right, Chad's here. Nicholas is here. Experienced basketball is here. Audio is good. Just making sure. Just making sure.
All these Anthony Edwardses going to uh, to Nicole. We've got randomized the T Wolves in this break. Here's a National Pride one. <clears throat> Maybe some low numbers, numbered cards would be nice to find for those those these top tier rookies here. Nancy's here watching. Hi, Nancy. It's John Wall to eighty five. Now, we are booked up for the night, ladies and gentlemen. This is a pretty long break that will gobble up a lot of time, and then we've got a few other quick little breaks to close out the night. But uh, <clears throat> we have um, Chris Jaspie on the IG, on Instagram Live right now. So I don't think he's booked for the night. So if you want to knock out some personal boxes with him, you can check out Instagram Live, at Jaspie's Breaks, Instagram Live. Nancy's here. Nicole's here. Good. Nicole <clears throat> got the T Wolves in this from a from a spot that she won in the filler. Now if we can get some uh, some low numbered Anthony Edwards cards, some gold cards maybe, that'd be pretty nice. Pretty, pretty, pretty nice. How's my fancy baseball team doing, you guys? Let's find out here. Oh, is that out? Woo! Gabe, where's Gilo? Gilo! Gabe! Gabe, you have Max Muncy on your fantasy team. He just hit a grand slam. Gilo! Gabe! Gabe's not listening. Gilo's not listening. There you go. How's Joe's fantasy team doing here? Logan O'Hop, one for two. Good. Spencer Steer, two for four with a double and an RBI. I'll take it. Jeff McNeil, one for four. Double and two RBIs. I'll take it. Luis Ringifo, two for three. Two RBIs. I like that. Trey Turner, three for four. Three, an RBI, three runs scored, and a stolen base. Nice. Ben Intendi, one for four. Brandon Marsh, three for five, two doubles, a home run. Wow, that's a nice day for Brandon Marsh. Three RBIs. There's my guy, James Altman. One for two, and a walk, and a stolen base. One for two with a triple. Wow. Otani's 0 for two. But Stanton, one for four with a double. A couple RBIs. Nice. And I got Emmanuel Classe with a one-inning save, two-strikeout save. It's a nice fantasy day for my team. Second place. And Nine and a half or nine roto points behind behind Waka. Michael Waka Waka Waka. It's not actually Michael Waka, it's just the name of his team. You're welcome, Nicole. Thanks for uh, thanks for getting in. Appreciate it. And for the Thunder, Alexei Pokosevsky for OKC. The Thunder, going to Nicholas. The Thunder had a really nice season this year without Chet Holmgren. There's Gilo. Gilo, I was calling for you. Did you hear me? Another Muncie homer, a grand slam, a grand salami.
There's an Okongwu variation for Nicole and the Hawks. That's right. Three for three, two home runs, seven RBIs, Gabe. Ooh. I like it. You like it. You like that? You like that? Is Killian Hayes, 30 out of 85. Rex has an idea. What do you guys think about Rex's revamp all-star game idea? Have it after the World Series and just have all the players with the best stats? It's Killian Hayes for Detroit, Simon. So you're saying like no fan voting or anything like that? Get rid of that? Make it a after-season exhibition event? Hmm. Hmm, that's interesting. But I anticipate some issues. If they do it after the World Series, which is when you'd have to do it, right? Then there will be a number of players that might have the best stats that uh, haven't been playing for a month. Right? Because the playoffs take, what, from October through early November? It's like a month of of a lot of, of majority of the league not playing. And then you're saying, have them ramp up, get back out there. That sounds like an injury nightmare to me. Do players get, how, how often do players get serious injuries though? In an all-star game. It is a concern, I guess, for pitchers most. I feel like pitchers mostly, right? They don't want them like kind of throwing out of turn in the rotation or whatever. I think the time to do it would be. Well, no, not after the regular season because then you, you don't want players playing an exhibition game before the playoff. Any of the playoff players probably wouldn't want to play. Although it is kind of weird to do it in the middle of the season, right? Because it's like a sort of a mid-season award being an all-star. Some gold out of 10, TJ Warren. Three out of 10 for the Pacers. That's gonna go to Chad and the Pacers. Would doing it before the season starts, would that be too weird to honor 2022 All-Stars before the 2023 season. That's kind of weird too, right? Because by then, there may be players that were All-Stars on different teams and then would be... How would you get the... Now, that would just look weird. right? Because some All-Stars may be on different teams the following season. Hmm. Alex Caruso, 74 out of 85. I do like the idea of just, let's just take the fan vote out of it. I guess the kids like that, but I don't know. Why not just take the fan vote out of it? Just say whoever has the best is P.J. Washington Jr. Variation? No, it doesn't have a variation V on it, but... Just in case, I'll sleep it up.
James Weissman, there's the variation right there. That is for Chad and the Warriors. Hmm. Alex Vesia has loaded the bases. Come on, Alex. What are you doing? They should play a flag football game. And for the Pro Bowl, they should play a base, a softball game, Gilo. Is that what you're thinking? I think, uh, you know who would like that, Gilo? Is... Is uh is Jock Peterson? I think he played football in high school. Did he play football with? He yeah he played football with Devonte Adams. In his senior year, he led the team. Not Devonte. He led the team. With 30 receptions, 650 yards, and nine touchdowns. Peterson was the team's number one wide receiver, according to Wikipedia, racking up more yards and touchdowns than his teammate, future NFL two-time All-Pro first-team wide receiver, Devontae Adams, who was a junior at the time. I'm sure Devontae Adams' senior numbers were, were quite nice. But I guess not nice enough. He only ended up at Fresno State. Alejandro Kirk would probably be a good football player. Baseball players who would be a good NFL player. What position would Alejandro Kirk play in the NFL? Alejandro Kirk is 5'8", 245. Running back. There's Hunta Murray, 36 out of 50. That'll be for the Spurs. That's going to go to Tristan. And the autograph. Is that Jay Sean Tate? Yes, nice. Nice autograph for the Rockets. Steve Birch with Houston. I think Dan Vogelbach's a big dude. Six foot two seventy. Where are we seeing Dan Vogelbach? Could be a could be a uh, a nose tackle, maybe, a defensive end. Jose Altuve would be some sort of speedy receiver, like a Tyreek Hill. It's Trey Young, 35 out of 85. Nicole with the ATL.
And we got an Anthony Edwards variation. All these add up, Nicole. Get some of these graded. Hopefully we get some, some PSA 10s out of here. Aaron Judge, 6'7", 282. That's, what is that? That's a, that's a, it's like a tight end side. Can you imagine Aaron Judge as a tight end, 6'7", 282? How big's Kelsey? Gilo, how big's Travis Kelsey? Now the random.org gods shining upon you, Nicole. It's <laughs> good to get the Timberwolves in this one. Oh wow. Doctors got out of that unscathed. Yeah, there you go. Mark Mark saying, Delara is saying LeBron by comparison, six eight two fifty. Kelsey is 6'5", 250. Oh, man. Aaron Judge could be a tight end in the NFL. That's a good position for him. Or if he was a little slimmer, he's got a little bit of speed, right? If he, little, if he sheds a little bit of weight, I mean, he could, he could be kind of a big wide receiver as well. It's, it's wide receiver with that, with that kind of size. Trout is 6'2", 235. Could also be, but Trout's got a little speed too. Could be a good good receiver. I did see that Travis Kelsey's first pitch for the Guardians, but it wasn't like fifty cent bad though. Although I'm not so confident I could do any better in the pressure filled moment. Be far more confident throwing a football. Another Anthony Edwards. Right, Kirk and Judge weigh the same, except. Her, uh, judge has a has some inches in height on him. There's Isaac Okoro, Jenna with Cleveland. Cleveland, this is for you. Ooh, I see an Anthony Edwards. I see the color blue. I spy with my eye a 23 out of 85 NBA debut, Anthony Edwards. Nice. Got some serial numbers here. That's for Nicole and Minnesota. Big. That's what they say, right? That's how they pronounce big. Big. Yeah, we'll give it the color match, right? Matches up with the color of the team. I like that. You like that? You like that? Someone calling the store right? We're closed. Sorry. We're open at 11. Person is calling. Obi Toppin. 
for the Knicks. What's everyone's favorite topping? Mario with the Knicks. Whether it's a frozen yogurt, <laughs> yogurt, whether it's a, a pizza maybe, ice cream. What's your favorite topping? Mushroom on a frozen yogurt, huh? Listen, I'm kidding. Yeah, I like a mushroom pizza. Oh, you think that's Alejandro Kirk calling to file a complaint? Because were, were we size shaming him? All right. That was the first quarter of the case. Here's the second quarter of the case. Who's really trying to call? Probably a a, a, a spam call. It's not a robo it's call. Yet. It's the same dude who's called twice in a row. And not Got audio again. My rule of thumb is that if I call someone at the hours of 9 p.m. or later, <laughs> something is horribly, terribly, desperately wrong. Right, right, and right. I don't think that's the case with our our back-to-back -back calls here. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Just me about, yeah. I'm a, not a phone guy. I prefer the text message or the, especially if I'm speaking with a retailer. That's Cam Reddish for the ATL. Fast break autograph for Nicole. Some blue on the bottom. And it is Tyrese Maxey, National Pride Blue, 72 out of 85. Tristan with the Sixers. Tristan, what's going on? Yeah, it's a lot of boxes. This breaks, in spite of the length of time, it's actually a pretty uh, a pretty smooth break. All the cards are pretty much right side up. You know, maybe only one numbered card a box, one auto a box. I'm not 
sleeving and top loading too much stuff. There's lamella variation for Steve Birch. You know, the packs open real smoothly. That's always a plus. You know, we've, we've been seeing some decent stuff like this LeBron James, 12 out of 20. National Pride, pink parallel. For my Lakers, that's going to be for David from the Lakers, last spot mojo. I think these numbered LeBron cards are have a decent amount of, of value. And you'll, get, you'll be getting all of them too. All card shit. All right, another box. All right, let's see what what else is going on. We got we got mostly finals, final scores here. Diamondbacks shut out the uh, Brewers three nothing. Rockies beat the Cardinals seven to four. Rangers beat the Royals eleven to two. Cubs beat the Mariners three to two on a Nico Horner walk off the plate. Braves beat the Reds and Extras five four. Sean Murphy walk off homer. Mets shut out the Padres. Phillies. Phillies destroyed Sandy Alcantara, 15 to three. 20 hits too. Rays, undefeated, 10 nothing. Or 10-0 is their record, one nothing was, uh, was their win. When they first started off, you know, 4-0, 5-0, then it was just like, all right, I mean, that's you know, opening weekend sweep. Of a team, not, not it's fine. But when you start getting to double digits, that's when you got to start paying attention. The record is thirteen and zero to start an MLB season. So let's keep an eye on that. I think they got to sweep the Red Sox to get there. Uh, Astros beat the Pirates eight two. Orioles beat the A's five one. Guardians beat the Yankees three to two. White Sox beat the Twins 4-3. Dodgers leading the Giants 9-1 in the bottom of the 8th. And in the bottom of the 8th, uh, Nationals are leading the Angels 6-4. Tristan was saying, you were pre-screening some Wanders and Julios for submissions. Oh, he got some tired out eyes looking through a magnifying lens, looking at surface and edges. Out of probably like 50 cards, you're probably only going to submit seven or eight. That's some, that's some dedication. I could use a, uh, a jeweler's loop here. Maybe I, I could make use of that. There's Blake Griffin to 85 for the Nets. That'll be for Steve Birch. I would love for like PSA or something like that to have like a, I don't know, to have like a little introductory course on like, hey, here's how our graders do, do some stuff. Here's what we're looking out for. You know, it'd be nice to, nice to be able to kind of have some of the basics from the people who are doing it, you know? Race 116. Well, Rays are in a tough division. I don't think they've... I think this Red Sox series might be the first game against a, uh, a division opponent. So those, those, those games are going to get a lot tougher. There's Patrick Williams, rookie autograph. We'll see him in the play-in game. That will be for David Lemons and the Bulls. Last spot mojo. There's 
Hey, you know, Jaspies is great for uh, Jaspies is great for uh, for new parents, especially if they're waking you up in the middle of the night, especially if you're on a different time zone. Rudy Gobert, the fighter, two out of fifty for the Jazz. It's for Steve Birch. All right, next box, good luck. You did have a numbered Tyrese Maxi, I thought. It's in there somewhere. Hey, Jordan Walker has extended his hit streak to 10 games. Pretty exciting. I think he's a Cardinals highly touted prospect, so I don't know if you were necessarily I don't think you were necessarily getting your letting your Jordan Walkers gather any dust, but it's time to take a look at maybe what Jordan Walker can do this season. You know what? I gotta in, in the break schedule I gotta make like a little tab for like one key rookie on every team to to kind of keep an eye out for. We'll work on that at some point. All right, another box. Have it your way. All right. Let's keep going. We got a Grayson Allen. 38 out of 50 for Memphis. That's going to go to Tristan and the Grizz. Staying up late. There's LaMelo National Pride for Steve. There's an Anthony Edwards and Bain. Desmond Bain, variation for the Grizz. That's for Tristan. And an NBA debut, Anthony Edwards for Nicole and Minnesota. There's a Jason Tatum, National Pride, 60 out of 85 for the C's. Chad C with the C's. Yeah, that uh, G-Lo point, Rays have already scored 76 runs. Who's next closest team? 60, I think, Dodgers. And the Rays have 76. Also, more importantly, look at the run differential. Rays have a plus 58 run diff. Run diff. And as the Dodgers only have plus 16. The second highest is the Brewers at plus 22, but they've only scored 48 runs. And they've allowed 26. Rays have allowed less than 20 runs this season. 20. 
They, they've allowed 18 runs. Yeah, Rays pitchers dialed in too. Dealing as well, says Tristan. Here's Michael Porter Jr. Fast break autograph for Denver. That's for Jenna. And the Nuggets. I mean, it's baseball. You know, there's going to be a regression for sure. But it's an, it's an impressive start. Although, who are they playing, though, really? <laughs> Tigers for three games, Nats for three games, A's for three games. But still, hey, win, wins are wins, right? It's hard to win in baseball. Yeah, if Wander can stay healthy the entire season, that would be huge. Not only for, uh, not only for the Rays, but for the hobby. That hashtag good for the hobby. Royals new manager from the Rays. We haven't gotten to 30 runs yet. Come on. Come on, Royals. Yeah, my my uh, my predictive model, which is not great at the moment, keeps wanting me to take the Royals. But uh, they've been losing me losing me some money. You want to see Stephen Kwan make the All-Star game. That would be good for the hobby, too. I feel like if, uh, if someone named Julio Rodriguez didn't exist in the AL, that Stephen Kwan might have, been the, uh, might have been your AL Rookie of the Year last year. Aside from tonight, Royals pitching is holding down the fort, fort so far. Just can't score. Yeah, what's going on there? What's Bobby Wood, what's Bobby Wood Jr. doing? Robin Lopez, 61 out of 85 for Steve Birch. And Bobby Wood Jr. hitting like 150. You need Bobby Wood Jr. to have like Wander Franco numbers. That's what we want to see. Sean Kemp for the Cavs. That's going to be for Jenna and Cleveland. This is for you. Cleveland, this is for you. I do not remember Sean Kemp Cavs edition, by the way. I have no, no memory of that. And a gold, Denny Avija. That's a 10. 2 out of 10. C. Birch, NBA debut.
Anthony Edwards. All those add up. Peyton Pritchard, a variation for the Celtics. Big triple-double for Peyton Pritchard recently. Malachi Flynn. Another box coming up. Who does everyone have in the playoffs? I think we got a play-in game, Lakers and, uh, and Timberwolves playing against each other. I think both of those uh, games are TNT games tomorrow. Timberwolves at Lakers. That's a late game on TNT. Who does everyone have? According to ESPN, Lakers are projected to win by 85.4%. They are the favorites at minus eight. Facing a little drama to close out the season. No Rudy Gobert. And I feel like Rudy Gobert has played played well against against the Lakers. In previous meetings. I think Jaden McDaniels is out there. I think he broke a hand or a wrist or something like that. Lakers close out the season on a strong note, winning four of their last five games. They beat uh, some easy comments. They beat the Rockets and the Jazz in OT. That was a dangerous loss almost. They lost the Clippers. They beat the Suns, but they weren't really, they didn't, I don't think they played any of their starters. And then they, they beat the Utah Jazz. Timberwolves lost to the Lakers in their last meeting in late March, then lost to the Trailblazers right after that, but then beat the Nets, beat the Spurs, put 151 on the Spurs, and then beat the Pelicans 113 to 108. So everyone agrees the Lakers, all right? The early game is Atlanta at Miami. Or maybe nobody wants to hurt my feelings. Atlanta at Miami. This is a little more of an even matchup, 56.4%. Miami, according to ESPN. 25 out of 50, Town Horton Tucker, Lakers. That'll be for David. Heat or favored by five. There's an Anthony Edwards and an Onyeka Okongu. I think both of these go to Nicole. Right, Nicole has the Hawks and the T-Wolves. Gilo just roots for the coolest uniforms. 
All right, so Heat and Hawks, who do you think wins? No, nobody fired up about basketball, the playing, maybe, the, maybe no one's fired up about playing games. And we got a blue Anthony Edwards, 28 out of 85. T-Wolves, Nicole with the Timberwolves, nice. It's our second one, I think. A color match. And behind LaMelo is Anthony's teammate, Jaden McDaniels. All right, Clippers and Heat got some rocking uniforms, says Gila, so that's who he's supporting. You think we've seen six to seven Edwards numbers today? Maybe more? That's good. I like that. All right, we are halfway through this break. Gilo's thinking maybe root for the Kings because they used to be in Kansas City here in Kansas City. say am I, am I going chalk here am I going favorites I kind of want to see Atlanta do some work in the playoffs I feel like that's good for the hobby if Trey Young can get some uh, get some national TV time you know have some lights out performances I'd like to see that on Wednesday both of the games are ESPN games anyone have any thoughts on Chicago at Toronto I wouldn't mind seeing who would I like to see? A lot of former Lakers on Chicago. Maybe I'd want to see the Bulls advance. Toronto's favored, minus five. And then the late game on ESPN on Wednesday will be uh, will be Oklahoma City at Nolens. The Pelicans. I guess without Zion, I feel like the Pelicans aren't aren't super exciting. Wish Zion was out there though. I do like that Pelicans team though. But a lot of good for the hobby opportunities, you know, for Oklahoma City. No Chet Holmgren, obviously, but you know, guys like Josh Giddy. If anyone has any Clippers edition SGA. Rookie cards, that'd be good for the hobby. He does well. Back here, speaking of the Kings, uh, Tyrese Halliburton variation. This is Kings edition that goes to Tristan.
And we got a Maxi Kleba, 78 out of 85. Dallas, me for Nicholas. And then I guess on Friday, there'll be the two, the final two play-in games that'll determine the eight seeds. And we got for the Spurs, Trey Jones. Rookie auto for the Spurs. That's going to go out to Tristan. And a National Pride, Anthony Edwards. All right, another box. So the games that don't require teams to wait for uh, play-in matchups. First group of games. So... The Bucks and the Celtics are going to wait for the play-in results. One series as it, that is set is Sixers, uh, the three seed, playing the Brooklyn Nets, the six seed. Sixers obviously heavy favorites to uh, to move on. Is is uh is Joel Embiid? He put fifty two on the Celtics. Is Joel Embiid a uh, is, is he the MVP? Or is it going to go to Nikola Jokic again? ESPN has uh, giving the Sixers a seventy five percent chance of advancing. I could see Brooklyn. Taking a game, but I think that might be it. Might might be a four-one series right there, a little a gentleman's sweep. I think the other matchup, um, Cavs versus Knicks. This is kind of, so the ESPN numbers, whatever they're worth, has the Knicks fifty-two percent chance of. Uh, of advancing, but the series odds is Cavs minus two oh five. So they're they're pretty favored. I like the Cleveland roster too, Gabe. Gabe was mentioning earlier he likes the Cleveland roster. I think that's a fun team to watch. I think that that could be. I mean, they're four or five seeds, so I feel like they're you know, they are who we thought they were. But it could be a good series. I could see like a seven game series here. It's Anthony Edwards NBA debut and a James Weissman four out of ten NBA debut gold for Chad and the Warriors. And a Tyrese Halliburton rookie autograph 
for Tristan and the Kings. We were talking earlier in the first case that that in recent memory, at least, probably one of the one of the trades, one of the few trades in recent memory that kind of worked out for both teams. It wasn't super lopsided one way or the other. Anthony Edwards, a national prize for Nicole, Minnesota. All right, another box. Let's take a look at those, uh, the Cavs and that Knicks roster. I guess th this might, this, this has the makings of a really fun series, I think. I think that'll be the one sort of non, sort of Lakers series that I'll be, uh, I'll be watching, or maybe if the Lakers don't advance, <laughs> I might need a team to root for. They got Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Isaac Okoro, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. It's a pretty well-balanced team. They got a decent bench, too. Karis LeVert can score some points off the bench. They got a... They got a vet in uh, Ricky Rubio in there. Chetty Osman, solid. They got a they got Danny Green on that team. They need need a quick clutch three or two. Danny Green can get in there and provide that. I don't know much about the coach, but if they gotten this far. There's been some good coaching there. Some just good, some good balance there. Donovan Mitchell, good fit with this team. They got some good guard play. They got some good bigs. Is Jalen Brunson out for this game? There's a little red O next to his name indicating out. Well, two days ago, Brunson hand will not suit up for the regular season finale. He's got to play this playoff game. He's going he's gonna to play. He's going to play. But we got Jalen Brunson. We got Quentin Grimes, R.J. Barrett, Obi Toppin, Mitchell Robinson. Why do they not have Julius Randle on this list? Oh, he's not out. Oh, they moved him around. They think he's out, too. He's not. Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, Obi Toppin. Emmanuel quickly off the bench. It's a good team, too. Got Josh Hart for some threes. And that's going to be an exciting series. Speaking of Donovan Mitchell, there's Jazz Edition right there. All card ship. We got a Belitza, 42 out of 85. Heat for Nicole. Former King, maybe? The autograph behind Ellaby is Spencer Dinwiddie. Fast break autograph for Brooklyn. It's going to go to Steve Birch in the Nets.
Lonnie Walker the fourth for the Spurs, 28 out of 50. Behind National Pride, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Maxey variation. That's for Tristan and the Sixers. Anthony Edwards, Nicole, and Minnesota. Another box. So Denver and and Memphis are waiting on play-in winners. I think that Kings on the Western side of things. So the Kings and Warriors. That's got to be a fun. Uh, that's got to be a fun series. Their 16-year playoff drought coming to an end. And the Kings have been scoring, scoring just points at will. De'Aaron Fox averaging 25 a night. DeMontis Sabonis averaging 19 and 12. Seven assists a night. Kevin Huter adding 15 a night. Harrison Barnes, 15 a night. Malik Monk, 13 a night. Getting Keegan Murray, kid, 12 a night. Five rebounds and an assist a night. It's pretty good. Yeah, they lead the league in points per game with 120.7. Next closest, Warriors, 118.9. So it's going to come down to, we know both teams can score. Which team is going to play defense? That will be the uh, that will be the big thing, right? And both teams give up about the same amount of points, right? So it's Kings give up about 118 points a night, Warriors give up about 117 points a night. So it's going to come down to who's going to play. Maybe not. I mean, it doesn't even have to be. Consistent defense throughout a game. It's like who's because you know the points are going to happen, but who's going to who's who's going to play defense in the last five minutes of the game when it counts? That's going to be the key to each game.
We got a blue Norman Powell to 85 for Portland. That'll go to Nicole. And behind Lamar Stevens is Kenyon Martin Jr. Fast break autograph for Houston. Steve Birch and the Rockets. The Rockets red glare. Lamelo Ball National Pride for Steve. the other West matchup that's already set. Suns at Clippers. That should be a fun one, too. Suns are kind of heavily favored in this. Suns are going all the way to the finals, right? I mean, I feel like anything less than that would be a disappointment with that roster. Yeah, and Clippers don't have Paul George at a critical time. He had a really bad, like, hyperextended his knee or something crazy like that. All right, Desmond Bain, Bain. Oh, you think darkness is your friend? You were born by the light. I was born in it. All this NBA talk, I'm, I can tell by the, in the chat, everyone's fired up about the about the NBA playoffs. Chat is on fire. I'll be topping with the Knicks, Mario. Just want to do a quick mic check. Anyone out there? 
Everyone's sick of this break already. There's Malik Beasley to 85. He's been a great addition to the Lakers. Maybe the stream crashed. Jason's saying it's fine. Good. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. Almost done, folks. Final five boxes. Which I'm sure will be music to your ears. Final five boxes. And then we've got a couple, we got some quick one box breaks to knock out. We've got a Donner's pack to knock out after this, an impeccable box. A capstone box, and that'll probably bring us to to the end of the night. James, it's it's close. It's gonna, and we got another thirty minutes to go. So we'll, we'll this break will be done by a little bit past the top of the hour. Nicole still here? All right, great. Just making sure people are still alive. All right, we're get we're getting there. I had no idea these fast break cases were were so uh, were so dense. I thought these were just uh, hour-long cases, but maybe maybe I was thinking of a case of uh, mosaic hobby, which I think lands at about forty-five minutes to an hour. I just thought the fast break was faster. <laughs> I think these breaks are like almost two hours. Hour 45, hour 40. Thanks, Nicole. You're welcome. We're getting there. I don't think I definitely would not have been able to do this break. I mean, I would have, but I think I, I would have been gassed if I did this break two cases in a row. I don't have the breaking stamina for that. Not anymore, anyway. One out of 50, Steph Curry. I've been doing this for eight, nine years. It's Cole Anthony, rookie auto. Nice one for Orlando. Chad with the magic. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of innings in this arm.
looking at the odds from DraftKings, NBA champion odds. The Bucks are the favorites at plus 265. And the Celtics are next at plus 320. Then the Suns at plus 425. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. If you're a Suns fan... About four to one to win the whole thing. I wouldn't mind that. Then it jumps to the Sixers at plus 900. That's about nine to one. Warriors are about nine to one. Nuggets are plus 1100, 11 to one. My Lakers, 18 to one, plus 1800. Their, their odds are, should be longer than that, but just the public nature of the Lakers and, and LeBron. Grizz are plus 2,000, Clippers are plus 4,000, Cavs plus 4,000, it's 40 to 1. Kings are 80 to 1, plus 8,000. Knicks are 14, plus 14,000, 140 to 1. The Heat are about 250 to 1. T-Wolves about 300 to 1, then it just goes from there. Raptors, Hawks, Pelicans, Nets, Thunder, and Bulls. Although uh, Jason Jaspi, a big fan of the uh, OKC Thunder, they're at plus 100,000. So I think that's 1,000 to 1. <laughs> Put $10 on that. We got an Isaiah Joe, 3 out of 10. For the Sixers, that's going to be for Tristan. And another one for Tristan from Isaiah Joe to Tyrese Maxey. Sixers are plus 900. It'd be good to... I don't know. Is there a Sixers, like, window? What, what is... How open is that window? How close is it? You know, you got Joel Embiid playing excellent basketball, MVP level basketball. He's been healthy for a little while. But this next season or two might be in that. You know, James Harden isn't getting any younger. And I think he's dealing with some sort of ankle issue or something like that, foot issue. There's another Anthony Edwards variation. I don't think the do the Bucks have a window? No, I don't think so. I think the, that window is pretty open as long as Giannis is on that team. As long as they keep refreshing the pieces around Giannis, I think they'll be fine. And of course, the Suns window will be however long uh, KD is there. It's like, what, three or four more years? I guess Warriors window is how, however long Steph and Clay can play at that level. They've got some youngsters that looked great last season, maybe took a step back this season, but if they can get you know another draft, another free agent window, they gotta figure out what to do with Draymond and free agency. 
you know, they, they kind of work some pieces out. They'll still, they'll still be in the mix. Is there a Nuggets window? I mean, I'm, I think they're just going to keep rolling with who they, who they have. Just hope that it all just clicks one year. As long as, uh, as long as Jokic and guys like Michael Porter Jr. are healthy, right? Jamal Murray is contributing and healthy and all that stuff. As long as they have that, they're always going to be in the mix. Uh, I guess the next favorite would be the Lakers definitely have a window. That's the LeBron window. Because once he's gone in the next year or two, then they got to figure out. I, don't know, I guess Anthony Davis still has a few more years left. they got to kind of figure all that out. Yeah, they have to watch out from the right hook from, from Draymond Green. Some of the longer shot teams like OKC, they've got a really got a really big window. They've got a lot of draft capital, a lot of draft assets they have moving forward. They got Chet Holmgren coming back next year. If they already played this well without Chet Holmgren, imagine adding Chet Holmgren to this team. Plus they'll draft some more players, I would imagine, and they could lure a free agent or two out to OKC. Desmond Bain variation. Memphis, that's going to be for uh, Tristan and the Grizzlies. Another Desmond Bain for Tristan, 7 out of 20. You think his punch may have affected team chemistry? I don't know. I, I mean, I think for the first week after that, probably... You know, but they still ended up, you know, with the sixth seed, 44 wins. I mean, I think as long as, as long as, uh, you know, leaders like Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Steve Kerr, guys like that, as long as those guys are there. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't think I don't think that's going to be an issue. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, Chet Holmgren staying healthy would be great. Now he's almost the uh, he's almost the opposite of Zion, right? He, he's too skinny. But that should technically mean less weight on his on his joints, right? I don't know. Is there a sweet spot there? He's 7'1", 194. There's Malachi Flynn for Toronto. That'll be for Chad. Or maybe you maybe you want to keep Chad Holmgren that thin, <laughs> so it doesn't put a lot of pressure on those, on that body, on that frame. Well, that that seven one you thought I was telling you that's according to that's according to the Wikipedia, the internet, the Google.
Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, he's only 20 years old. If they put him on a, you know, even the standard, you know, NBA weight training and workout program, I'm sure he'll add add a little bit of muscle to that frame. But I don't think he needs too much. You know, if you have foot injuries, how much weight do you want to add to that frame and that foot? He, he's missed the season due to a Lisfranc injury. Let's see, the, the Lisfranc injury, also known as a Lisfranc fracture, is an injury of the foot in which one or more metatarsal bones are displaced from the tarsus. You don't want the metatarsals displaced from the tarsus. I guess on the foot, it would be like where your knuckles would be <laughs> on your hand. It's right there. In athletic trauma, list rank injuries occur commonly in activities such as windsurfing, kite surfing, wakeboarding, or snowboarding, where appliance bindings pass directly over the metatarsals. American football players occasionally acquire this injury, and it most often occurs when the athlete's foot is plantar flexed and lands, and another player lands on the heel. This can also be seen in pivoting athletic actions, such as a baseball catcher or a ballerina spinning. Now there, there's, your, there's your medical school for the day. Who's been my favorite player to watch in recent years? I mean, it's been, uh, I think it's definitely been a joy to watch Clayton Kershaw pitch. I think he's probably as closest as, uh, closest to, uh, Sandy Koufax, as we'd probably, we'd probably get. Yeah, I, I think maybe overstretching the Achilles might affect these metatarsals right over here. I'm going to flip screens for a second. There it is. That arrow is kind of the area. But along, along not just that area, but along the sort of, I guess it's almost like displacing like a knuckle or something like that. Here's a uh, Chris Mullen for the Pacers. That's for Chad and the Pacers. Got the Pacers in a trade. I'm trying to think. If you're if you're pivoting, right? You're almost you're almost on your toes, right? If you're if you're pivoting a little bit kind of on the ball of the foot right there. Another Lamello ball. There's Danny Avija.
Right, yeah, I mean, that's what they used to do in the old days, I think, right? They would just be like, let's just, let's just wrap it up. You know? Wrap it up, stitch it up, put a, put a slab of meat on there or something like that. Put it in some ice. Wrap it up real tight and let's go. There's an Anthony Edwards. Not a variation, but but a parallel of that base. Right, couple Advil. Wrap it up, have the trainer wrap it up real tight. I don't know. Well, you can go to part one of this video, Chad, and you can go to the, scroll to the end, go to the recap and count, and then come back and let us know what the total is. And then I'll do a recap here and we can count. Okay, we can get you a total. A lot, I feel like, though. A lot more than Lamella. Maybe Lamella is more short printed in this, in this set. Seems like it, anyway. I was serious. I wasn't trying to be funny. You're not gonna help? I need a I, I need a stats and info department. Chad is passing on that job. Chasky stat and info. You know, I need that stats and info department whenever someone's just like, man, this is totally a Red Sox case. <laughs> and if you actually do the math on, on on some breaks, it's really not. But, you know, people will fixate on these. It's like, oh, th those are the only teams hitting. And actually turned out to be a lot more even than people think. And that's why I need the stats and info department. Be like, it's really not. I mean, it's possible that the biggest hit might have been a particular team, and then there's some other hits around that, and then people would be like, people would be like, the Yankees case, just Yankees in here, just the same teams over and over again. In reality, it's not. Bradley Beal is our last autograph, our 40th auto in this dual case break. Steve Birch with the Wizards. That's right, Nolan Ryan was an Advil spokes. Uh, Spokesman, wasn't he? Spokesman? Spokesperson? Pitchman, as they would sometimes call it back in the day. Ambassador would be called at this point as well. Yeah, you know, you'd be surprised at how common those questions are, Chad, and I've come up with some responses. We got a variation, Peyton Pritchard. Chad C with the C's gets the Peyton Pritchard. We got Reggie Bullock, 10 out of 50. And last but not least, finals MVP, Dirk Nowitzki. Reggie Bullock, 10 out of 50 will go to the Knicks. That'll be for Mario and the New York Knicks. All right, this is the recap for part two of this dual case break. Are, are we counting, Chad? One, two, three Anthony Edwardses.
four, five. Five. Five, five, <laughs> Anthony Edwards is. Ah, ah, ah. That's your dual case break, ladies and gentlemen. This is part two. Part one's in a different video description in the uh, link in the description. Strike that, reverse it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.